Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 17 of the chapter Equilibrium. Let us now study about the factors that affect equilibrium. And before I come to the actual topic, let me just uh, take an example. Do you know when we were kids, we used to walk by the sides of flower beds and they would have a small little border of a little wall and uh, that was pretty thin and as kids you could put one foot on the wall and then we would try and balance and put the other foot in front and try to keep ourselves on the wall. So when you are walking on a thin wall and there's a chance that you fall down, you are maintaining your balance or equilibrium very carefully, keeping everything in balance and as you walk very carefully when you lift one foot and you put it in front of the other foot and then carefully you lift the other foot and put it in front and you balance the upper body also you bring out your hands so as to balance yourself what happens if anything like anything there's a wind gust or suddenly someone runs past you that disturbs the equilibrium and when that happens the moment the equilibrium is disturbed what do you try to do? You might fall down. So what do you try to do? You try to maintain the balance again. You try to counteract the effect of that change. And you want to bring yourself back to the same balance or to the state of equilibrium. That is what happens when chemical reactions take place. When a reaction that tends to reach the chemical equilibrium and it has achieved chemical equilibrium and any disturbance comes in, the equilibrium, it, the reaction tries to achieve the equilibrium again and in order to get back to the equilibrium, it has to make a few changes. For example, if someone suddenly ran from your side, you will be careful on this side and then you'll come down back to the other side so that your balance doesn't get spoiled. In the same way, when a change occurs in a reaction which has already established equilibrium, the equilibrium gets imbalanced. And when it gets imbalanced, it tries to counteract the effect of that change. And by doing that, it comes back to the state of equilibrium and it establishes equilibrium. How is this important? When you industrially are producing substances and we know <coughs> that this particular reaction will achieve equilibrium and you want the yield to be higher of whatever you're producing, and one of the products is your aim that you want to get this product. But when equilibrium is established, we already know that the reaction in the backward direction is also taking place at the same rate. So the yield here is not going to increase. So you will have to do something in order to shift the equilibrium towards the direction of the products. And that can be done now. We are using this information that it tries to achieve the equilibrium again. We use it to our benefit by bringing a change in the equilibrium in such a way that the reaction shifts in that direction where we want the equilibrium to establish in such a way that we get the product that we want. So this was explained by a principle which was known as the Lee Chatelier's principle. Lee Chatelier said that a change in any of the factors that determine the equilibrium conditions of a system will cause the system to change in such a manner so as to reduce or counteract the effect of the change. Let me repeat this. Change of any of the factors. What are the factors that affect equilibrium? Now those factors that affect equilibrium, if you change any of those factors, it will cause a change in the equilibrium. So change of any of the factors that determine the equilibrium conditions of a system will cause the system to change in such a manner so as now the equilibrium when the change occurs it will try to maintain the balance again. So whatever effect, whatever factor is affecting it, whatever change has taken place, the equilibrium will shift in that direction so that that change is, the effect of that change is removed. So he said, so as to reduce or counteract the effect of that change. It will either reduce that effect or it will totally eliminate the effect of that change. And the equilibrium will shift in such a way so that it establishes a new equilibrium and now it is stable again. And 
the Le Chatelier's principle is applicable to all kinds of reactions, all kinds of equilibria, both physical equilibria and chemical equilibria. Now, what are these factors that affect chemical equilibrium? In the consecutive videos, we are going to study each of these in details. But right now, let me just give you a synopsis. These are five things which may, five factors which may affect chemical equilibrium. The first is the effect of concentration change. You know, you can increase the concentration or decrease the concentration of a reactant or a product when the equilibrium has been established. And the moment, let us say, I increased the concentration of a reactant. Now, when you increase the concentration of the reactant, what happens to equilibrium constant? Equilibrium constant is you have the concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants. Now, you have increased the concentration of reactants. So, the value of QC decreases. And when the value of QC decreases, the value of KC was already there. In order to acquire the value of KC, the reaction will proceed in the forward direction. We did this two videos earlier. So I would encourage you, if you do not understand what I'm saying, to go back and view one or two more videos to understand this, where I told you the relationship between QC and KC. That is reaction quotient in KC. So if you increase or decrease, how do you decrease the concentration of a reactant or a product? You remove it from the reaction mixture. It's a, it's a gas that is being produced, you remove the gas. So you can change the concentrations of the reactants and products and the moment you do that, that causes stress to the equilibrium. And the moment it causes stress to the equilibrium, the equilibrium tries to counteract the effect of that stress. It wants to do away with that stress. Oh, you disturb the equilibrium. I will, I will come back to the equilibrium. Let me first deal with you. So it will try to remove the effect of that particular change and establish the equilibrium again. So the first uh, factor that affects equilibria is a change in the concentration of the reactants or the products. The second effect can be when the pressure is changed. We know we talk of equilibrium constant in terms of pressures, the partial pressures. So if you change and also the reactions, they take place at certain pressures and the equilibria are established under certain temperature pressure conditions. So if you change the pressure, that also causes a stress to the equilibrium and the equilibrium shifts in that direction where the effect of that pressure is removed. What is the effect of addition of an inert gas? And I would like you to imagine that there are few people who are working very carefully and all of a sudden a little baby comes and he starts playing. The baby is not saying anything to anyone. He's just there. He's just enjoying himself. He's, he's just, and he's not even, you know, demanding attention. He's just playing with the ball. And these people who are working, it really makes no difference to him, uh, to them, that the little kid is just playing on his own. So they continue working. It does not affect them because that little child is not disturbing. An inert gas is a gas that does not react. If it does not react, its presence is like that of an undisturbing child. When it comes into an equilibrium reaction mixture, the inert gas itself is not participating, it is not disturbing. Therefore, it, the effect of an inert gas is actually, there is no effect on equilibrium. The effect of temperature change is the next factor. Now we know, if a reaction takes place in one direction, it will be endothermic and in the other direction, it will be exothermic. If it is endothermic in one direction, it has to be exothermic in the opposite direction. So if you increase the temperature, let us say you increase the temperature of the reaction mixture. Now the reaction, the equilibrium is disturbed. And when it is disturbed, there is stress. When there is stress, what should it do? It will do something that reduces the temperature. So how will it reduce the temperature? It will start moving in the direction, direction where heat is used up. That is, it will start moving in that direction which is endothermic. So that it uses up that heat and once it uses up that heat, the temperature goes down. So in this manner, we see the effect of temperature would also cause stress and the reaction will change its direction and equilibrium will be established once more according to Le Chatelier's principle. And what happens when you add a catalyst? What is a catalyst? A catalyst, you know, there's a blind man walking on the road. And you're walking by and you suddenly realize that man is having a little difficulty because the traffic is too much. So what do you do? You go, you're, you're going your way, but you just go, you hold the hand of the man 
and or you guide him whatever way you assist him and you help him cross the road and then the man it helps him because he goes he crosses the road faster because of your help and then he goes your his way and you go your way what did you do what was your role you only came and you assisted you just helped a little you just gave him a little speed you just gave him a little push that is the role of a catalyst a catalyst is something that assists in a chemical reaction so if you have a chemical a catalyst in a chemical reaction which or which has already achieved equilibrium the catalyst its role is only to speed up that process that is it will help a reaction to establish equilibrium faster so uh, if you add a catalyst it really has no effect on the equilibrium constant it only has an effect on how fast the equilibrium will be achieved so these are the factors that affect chemical equilibria and of course physical equilibria too so let me just repeat lee shatler's principle now for you to understand all of this that a change in any of the factors that determine the equilibrium conditions of a system will cause the system to change in such a manner so as to reduce or counteract the effect of that change right so this was Lee Shatler's principle and the factors that affect equilibria in the consecutive videos we are going to deal with each of these in more details if you found the video helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now